Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Ryan with Iowa Classic Cars, and today we have another rescue for you all. We're going back up to the land of Moritz Repair in North Dakota, and gonna pick up another 1959 Impala from him. It's a four-door sedan. It is gonna be a donor car for my convertible, but still, let's uh, let's put the old car to some good use anyways, and, and use the parts and use the body for what we can. Um, but what we're doing today is, as you see behind me here, we are going to be delivering two front clips to a guy that will meet me in North Dakota. And these are actually going to Thailand, if you can believe it. So we got two full front clips here. Two bumpers. And then in the back of the truck here, I've got a pile of hood hinges. So these are all going to Thailand. Um, so it's kind of a two to one trip. I'm gonna deliver all this stuff to the guy pick up a car and come home so hope you guys will enjoy the video hope you guys enjoy the rescue um, I'll keep you posted on what we do with the car in the future when that convertible gets started um, but anyways guys let's get rolling This is uh, Pasal's friend Ryan, he's from Minnesota. He builds custom trucks for a living. I'll put his uh, channel in the description. He was nice enough here to meet me. Uh, two and a half hours from his house, six and a half hours from mine. He's gonna put these in a container and they're headed to Thailand. So let's go get a 59 now. All right, we're in North Dakota here, bringing this gem home. 59 Impala, green on green. It's gonna be a good donor car here. Real nice tail panel section. Now this was a donor for your hard top, correct Todd? Yeah. This car donated its front clip for your car, right? Yeah, so it donated its front clip here for a 59 El Camino. Um, it is missing the lower control arm, so we'll have to put that on when we get to Iowa. Everything is there though. Wheel, gauges, dash trim, seats. Looks rough, but there's a lot of goodies here. All right, let's get the wheels off and get her loaded. In addition to the, to the car, I got a front clip. That was sitting in that tree line over there. So he yanked her out here with the skid loader and gonna go put it on the trailer now. What happened? Oh shit.
All right, we're all loaded. Got four bumpers. Got the front clip strapped down twice. No wheel on the front here, but that's okay. Got the hood strapped down. This fender's a little beat up, but it is Cameo Coral, and I've been looking for a set of these for a while, so that'll be, that'll be good. This side's squatting pretty good. But yeah, let's, uh, let's go get a hotel. We're gonna stop tonight in Brookings, South Dakota. So if anyone's from Brookings or South Dakota in general, leave a comment down below. Just let me know where you're at. And then tomorrow morning, we'll head on back to Iowa. Look what the cat drug in. Dude, he, doesn't, he doesn't have a dude with him. We thought you were gay this whole time. No, no, no. Nothing like that. I'm not from North Dakota. Uh, look at the look this guy. Hauling back a 88 to 98. Oh, Jesus Christ. The old Dodge. There's the, There's the khakis, man, He's right there. dirty, even. I did. Did you wash his hands? Oh, did you, did you clip your fingernails, too? Uh, yeah. Little. Oh. Look at this guy. All by himself in here. I want, eh, at least it's a manual. Oh, God almighty. The slotted mag. I love that. Just don't worry about that. What is that? Old stripe power? Yeah. There's the motor out of the uh, the mini truck. The Liam Nissan. The Liam Nissan. What is it? Liam Nissan. Nissan. Left that down with Puddin, the truck, and brought the motor and trans back. What year is the truck here? It's a 92. Of all the stuff he can buy, five states away, he buys this. And he talks shit on YouTube about me. And this is the stuff he's buying. Drive. Yeah, super clean. Yeah, it's worth what a grand? Oh no! Come on, man. All of fifteen hundred bucks. Fifteen hundred bucks. Better than coming back empty. Uh, yeah, what I hear you there. All up here, exactly. I Sail brought some. Fuel. I brought some uh, front clips. I dropped them off to guy for Thailand. So, all right, we're gonna get back to the hotel now. And Morrissey, good to see you, my man. Morning two of the journey, and. uh we officially have frost on the windshield. You know what that means. Winter is coming. Uh, real nice hotel, Holiday Inn. South Dakota State University uh, girls soccer team, I believe, was here, or basketball team, or I don't know, some kind of sports were here, but let's, uh, let's head home now. Four and a half hours drive, and we're back to the promised land, good old Iowa. All right, so we're home now. Uh, this side does not have a lower control arm on it. So we're gonna solve that. I've got a donor spindle off an R59 I parted out many years ago. I'm gonna take the, uh, the tie rod end, get that off of there, separate the lower ball joint from the from the uh, spindle, take the upper one off so we don't need that, and we'll put the whole thing on this car and get it to roll. So let's, uh, let's start now by working on this, this tie rod end. Simple as that. Always keep the nut on there so it doesn't come all the way off, but there you go. All right, this is a fun little tech tip today. So this lower control arm is held on with two bolts right here, one big bolt right here. If you're ever trying to put a bolt in there and it's not uh, taken, you might be missing one of these. This is uh, the lower control arm, I'm not sure what you call it, nut adapter thing. But anyways, that sits in right in there in the frame. You get it lined up with those other two holes and then you just put your bolt into that. If you're missing it, you can run uh, you know, some grade eight nuts with the grade eight bolts, but it's nice to have original equipment. So let's uh, get that controller and put on there now. All right, it's easier to put the uh, 
big single bolt in there first just to hold it for you. As you maneuver this thing around, when the bolts fall out, that's not good. All right, got the uh, the bottom on here. Just made it roll, so just got a different bolt just to keep it tight. A little trick, I'm sure everyone else knows here in the comments, but a little trick I've learned with this when you can't get the cotter pins out of the brake is just beat a socket on, so let's do that now. All right, so twist all the, uh, twist what you can of the cotter pin. Try to get a socket on that. Eleven sixteenths. I think. I'm probably doing this like a little idiot. like that force its way on there you go there's your there's what's left of your cotter pin I'm sure everyone else knows how to do that but if you're young and never mess with an old one like this that's a that's a way if you can't pull that cotter pin cotter pin out so Let's get this separated now. Thanks. There you go, easy as that. Another cool thing about these uh, GM ball joints here is you can tell if they're stock or replaced because stock ones are riveted in like this. Replacements are bolted in. So pretty cool, this car has its original ball joint on top and a replacement here on the bottom. If you're correctly trying to put new ball joints on, these shouldn't spin. Since I'm putting the old ones, I'm just leaving the old ones on and trying to get the spindle to roll. Eventually, the ball joint itself will spin. So just grab a set of channel locks and tighten up the ball joint. Holding the top of the ball joint so that this part doesn't spin. As you can see, spins. Grab a set of channel locks and crank her on. All right, there she is. It's not, you know, necessarily correct. You can see I've got a little bit of play in that bolt right there, but for what I need, it will hold the wheel. Now, if you wanted to, I could go get a shock and a spring, maybe cut down the spring a little bit since factory height ones are incredibly difficult to get put in. So it will sit up a little higher and I probably will do that here later. But we now put a wheel on it and she will roll. All right, everybody, we're home. Car does roll now. Well, on three of the four wheels, I suppose. Looks a whole lot better than the Iowa Sun, that's for sure. I love that green. I'm not sure if that's called Aspen Green or Highland Green, but it's a real nice color. She's sitting low, nice and low, but does roll. Now I'm just waiting on one more tire. 
for this side here and then we'll be able to unload this old girl. So if you guys enjoyed the video today, make sure to leave a thumbs up before you leave. Comment what you would do with this car if you had it. Personally, I kind of hate to cut a car up, but I do need a donor for mine and these are getting harder and harder to find. So one car, I guess, being cut up and I've saved probably three or 400. So I guess the, the odds are in my favor there. Uh, like I said, leave a comment. What you guys would do with this car if you had it? Would you restore it? Or would you leave it as is? What would you do with the interior? Let me know. And if you're brand new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe as you will stay up to date with all my latest finds. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Ryan with Iowa Classic Cars, and I will catch you next time.